Hello and welcome to this lecture. This is an overview of Amazon Cognito service. We will have few slides to lay down the foundations and soon enough we'll be heading to the console and getting our hands on the service. For most of the course, it is hands-on work. However, we just need these few slides at the beginning to understand some concepts. A very high level definition of Cognito is it's an identity provider. A user registry where you can keep users and add authentication and authorization to web and mobile applications running on AWS. It's also an identity broker or a token vending machine that you can use to create temporary access credentials to secure AWS services after user has been verified and authenticated by a third party IDB like social media account or an enterprise IDB using SAML. Let's dig into some more details. One of the primary use cases for Cognito is use it as an IDB, as an identity provider. In this case, it will function as a user registry. You can create users and groups as administrator or allow users to register through your application. Cognito will offer you the basic workflows to maintain and run a user registry. The other use case is when you don't want to maintain any users in your application, but you still want to add authentication and authorization to your application. So users will be authenticated with a third-party IDB. Users can log in with their social media account. And Cognito, in addition to verifying the identity with the third-party IDB, will offer the users temporary access credentials to access your secured AWS resources, like your backend services, your DynamoDB table, your ABIs, based on a preset IAM rule. All of this is done through ABI calls in your client application, whether it's a web or mobile client. This brings us to the next point. Cognito is a development tool or service. In most of the cases, you will have to write code to interact and use Cognito. You need to write JavaScript code in your web client to initiate authentication or initiate a sign up process. And after authentication, you need to write some code to get access tokens and then use these tokens when you are calling any of your secured backend services within the user session. You need to write code to handle failures and refresh tokens when expired and so on. Amazon Cognito provides three ABI development kits, JavaScript SDK for web clients, Android and iOS SDK for mobile clients. Cognito is a serverless service. You don't need to maintain any servers to store your users or execute authentication or any other workflow. It's fully managed by AWS. Cognito integrates very well with ABI Gateway, reducing the amount of code you need to write to use it for RESTful ABI security. You still need to write some code on your client side to authenticate with Cognito and attach the header when you are calling your RESTful services and so on. But from ABI Gateway side, it is just some configurations you add to your RESTful method. Cognito offers these workflows and features out of the box. It has a sign up and a sign in workflow, including notifications sent to the user, multi-factor authentication if needed, and additional custom challenges like adding a security question, adding a secondary code that will be sent to user mobile phone, and so on. It also offers profile management. Cognito offers ABIs to update user attributes and the use of custom attributes if needed. It also offers forgot and reset password workflows. And it offers email and mobile verification as part of the workflow. So if you need it, users will have to verify their email address and phone number before being enabled in the system. Cognito also offers some lifecycle hooks that you can use to invoke custom Lambda functions before and after certain states in most of these workflows, giving you the opportunity to customize the flow if needed. Cognito names it lifecycle triggers. And it has the feature of allowing unauthenticated or guest users. The way it works is that you simply define an IAM rule for unauthenticated or guest users, and Cognito will generate a token that's based on this rule. So you can customize and control what level of access your guest users have through this IAM rule. Cognito uses secure remote password protocol for sign-in, so users' passwords are usually verified on the mobile device and encrypted over the wire, so they are never transmitted in plain text between your client and the Cognito service. 
you don't have to worry about transmitting a plain password over the wire. Okay, if we use Cognito as a user registry, what are the different states for an account or a user added and created into Cognito? Let's have a look on that. You can offer your users to sign up through your application. You will write the code in your web or mobile client to allow users to sign up and then use Cognito APIs to start a sign up flow. This will put the user in registered state. So users are in Cognito, but they are still can't log in. Cognito will send notification to the user asking for verification of email or mobile phone or both if you configured it to do so. Once user confirms, the user will be in a confirmed state. At this time, the user can log in. You still, within your client, you will have to write the code to authenticate the user with Cognito using the ABIs depends on the client, depends on the type of the client you are developing, whether it's a web client or a mobile client. You can also auto-confirm users if you don't want users to verify their email address or mobile number or if you are actually not capturing email or mobile phone as part of your attributes. This is also doable through the ABIs. And there is another flow to adding users as an administrator. This works when you as administrator you need to register your users so you don't have a sign up feature or if you want to import bulk users from another backend system that you already have or so. Admin will add the user and this will put the user to registered state. The user can log in, however, temporary credentials created by admin are valid for one time only. So the password has to be changed at the first time the user logs into your system. After the first login and user changes the temporary password, the user becomes confirmed and can log in normally. Remember that Cognito has the workflow, but you have to write the code in your client to follow that workflow. For example, in this case, you have to write the code to log in the user and handle the case when Cognito returns a status that password change is required. Then you have to present your user with a UI to capture the new password and then submit the password change request to Cognito. As admin, you can also do some additional housekeeping stuff. Admin can disable an account and enable it back on. And when account is disabled, it can be deleted. So you can't delete an active account. It has to be disabled first and then you can delete it. So just to recap, there are two ways to add users to your Cognito user pool. Either you allow users to sign up through your application or as an administrator, you will create these users in a way or another in Cognito. The workflow is a slightly different. If you allow the users to sign up, they just have to confirm their account and then they can use the service and log in normally. If you add them as an administrator, then the user has to change the password after the first login. This is just something to keep in mind. You have to understand these flows so you can write the correct code to follow these flows and perform the necessary steps in your application. We talked about workflow customization and the triggers that could be invoked before and after certain states in your workflow. Let's have a look on what are the available triggers and for each of these triggers you can attach a lambda function. We can group these triggers into three primary workflows. Registration flow, normal authentication flow where ID and password are used, and custom authentication flow where user authentication is done programmatically, say using a custom code that you will send to user's mobile phone or a secret question and so on. Sometimes it is named passwordless authentication. In registration flow, the first trigger is pre-sign up. This trigger is invoked when sign up request is received but not yet processed. You may want to check if the user already exists or has the right to register. Then the user becomes in the registered state. At this state, Cognito will send a confirmation message to user's email address or mobile phone. This step is optional. You can configure your user pool to request confirmation or not. But if you do so, you have a trigger where you can customize these messages before are being sent. You can also inject any dynamic data or change the text of the message or so. Then the user has received the messages and confirmed email or mobile or both and becomes a confirmed user. Here you have a final trigger, post-confirmation. 
This is where you might add the user to a special group or perform any exit logic you would like to have in this flow. The second primary flow is the normal authentication, where ID and password are used. When authentication request is received, you have a trigger pre-authentication. You could have a Lambda function that checks account for any pre-authentication conditions you have in your application logic. Then optionally, Cognito can request a multi-factor authentication if enabled, or additional challenges if any. In this case, you have access to an additional trigger to customize the messages sent to the user. You can add any dynamic values in these messages or change the text in any way and so on. Keep in mind that you can add multiple verification stages to your authentication flow. So after a multi-factor authentication is confirmed, you can trigger an additional challenge to the user, say a secret question or a secret code that will be sent to email address and so on. In each of these cases, you have access to the custom message trigger. After the user is authenticated, you have a post authentication trigger to perform any final tasks before closing this workflow. The last workflow is for custom authentication, and primarily, this is a flow that's based on your Lambda functions to let you customize how you will authenticate the users. You will have a trigger define authentication challenge, then a trigger for creating authentication challenge. Then you have a trigger to verify the authentication challenge response from the user. This is where you determine whether to sign in the user and generate security tokens or reject the process and fail the authentication for this user. So this is a completely custom workflow that you will have to write all the functions involved in creating the authentication challenge, sending the authentication challenge to the user, expecting and receiving the response, validating the response, and then succeeding or failing this authentication attempt. Enough talking and let's jump into the console and start creating our first user pool. Later we will have a detailed discussion on authentication workflows and the types of tokens created for authenticated users. Thank you.